God after me, Doug, and welcome, welcome on to another Trivi Food live stream. Today we are assembling a meal from IKEA. Assembling, get it? You know, I don't have my little Allen wrench here, but uh, you know, maybe we'll scrape our knuckles a little bit as we put things together. So uh, today's live stream uh, we're doing with food that we bought from um, from IKEA. Now the only difference is that that um, one of the things is not from ikea and the reason is that ikea does not serve alcoholic or does not sell alcoholic beverages and apparently uh there isn't a swedish beer so uh, i looked all over the place for a swedish beer could not find a swedish beer uh anybody out there from sweden let me know if that's not correct but uh but here locally could not find a swedish beer uh we did substitute with a swedish alcoholic beverage um but we'll get to that when we get to that so how is everybody doing today? Happy Saturday to everybody. It's a uh, beautiful warm day here. Uh, it's supposed to only be in the 80s today, so a little bit uh, a little bit cooler, but uh, hopefully it's not too hot or too not too crazy where you are. I know we get some big fires going on in different places in Northern California. I don't know if we have it in Southern California, in Northern California and Oregon. I know we got some fires going on. Maybe some other places as well. It's crazy out there. I mean, you know, I always say that at the end, say like, take care of yourselves because it's crazy out there. It really is. It really is, tr really and truly is crazy out there. Um, uh, my apologies again, always, uh, to anybody who, like, um, if I haven't got caught up, caught up, caught it up, caught up. If I haven't gotten caught up with your videos on your, um, your YouTube channels uh, since I've started working again, my week is kind of like swamped and I've been trying to um, I've been trying to do editing and also I've been trying to do filming but filming usually uh, gets stuck on the weekends like for instance the reason that I had to reschedule today's live stream to today instead of having it yesterday is that yesterday I went to the Orange County Fair to film um, used to be I could do that during the week I can't do that during the week anymore so I had to do that on, on Sunday so I went with um, uh, Matt and um, Matt and Majestic Beard from Reckless Eating. We filmed a bunch of stuff. I think they're gonna do individual episodes. I think I only filmed two things and normally I would put those out as individual episodes, but I'm just gonna run them together, I think. Uh, we don't have a big thing um, highlighting other things at the fair because we did that, I think it was two years ago, did that two years ago. So I'm not really gonna uh, do that too much. Uh, I, I, I have to apologize to uh, Janice because when she found out that I was going to the uh, the Orange County Fair. She said, "Oh, well, let me know if you're looking for anything." Or something. I didn't see her. I didn't see her post until after I, I got back. So, you know, it is what it is. I see eight people in the. I don't know. If that's in the chat, in the you know, watching, uh, logged in and watching. I don't know what that is. But there's eight. Ah, oh, just went down to seven. Sorry, we lost somebody. Um, and usually it's not that high right off the bat, right at 1:03 p.m. So. So we've got a lot of people out there. Uh, let's see, who who have I not um, had not said hello to? Obviously, we have Haley and Chloe um, on the chat, and uh, they, they came in pretty early. So uh, so welcome. I miss you girls, and I hope I'll, I will see you soon. Uh, we have Janice Yamanaka, of course. Uh, can't break her streak. Cannot break her streak. We have El Marijuano 209. Welcome. I uh, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. And Pudding Power. Putting power, you, let's see, hang on a sec, one second. I thought that you, no, I don't know why I thought you were from the from uh, Europe. You're not from Europe, you're from the uh, Chicago area, but uh, but welcome anyways. I was gonna ask you about some some Swedish stuff, but you know, don't, no, don't need to, I think. Uh, well, the, the thing was, uh, Janice, is that we didn't know what we wanted to review. So we just wanted to go and we wanted to kind of seek out interesting and unusual things. Some some things were a little disappointing. Uh, it seemed like that there was a lot of Italian stuff this year, and it's and and a lot of the a lot of the boots, I guess, for lack of another term, a lot of the boots seemed to have signs that look exactly like some other ones. So it seemed like like um, somebody was supplying certain foods to certain boots. Uh, and um, um, and we saw that in a bunch of different places, like like uh, what was it, uh, lasagna nachos? So it was lasagna nachos. There was like three or four boot, different boots, different you know, different uh, companies, if, as you will, that uh, that said that they had um, 
uh, lasagna nachos. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. Uh, also, I don't know if it's because of COVID, but a lot of them were scaled back. So even though they had things on their menu, they didn't actually have it. Uh, and it seemed like those were the items that we went looking for. So it's like, hey, that looks really good. Do you have And like, sorry, we don't have it. Oh, yes, I know. I know why you don't have it. You don't have it because I'm looking for it. So that's kind of how that um, how that works. I hope you're. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, we, we were able to find everything we wanted to review only because we didn't know what we wanted to review. So uh, we found some interesting stuff and uh, and uh, it did that. So here we go. Lasagna nachos were from a couple of years ago, which we reviewed. Oh, okay. I don't. Re I don't remember seeing them. You know, like I said, we went to the uh, Orange County Fair a couple of years ago, and I don't remember seeing the lasagna nachos there. But I did see them a lot while we were there yesterday. So, you know, kind of, is what it is. Um, I think I'm trying to remember. We we did from one of the Italian uh, boots. We did um, we did mac and cheese egg rolls, and then from Biggie's, we did a um, uh, flaming hot Cheeto corn dog, but it wasn't a hot dog in it; it was a sausage in it. So you know, we did that. So we did those two things. Um, I don't. I, I have to go back and check and see if we did anything else. But like I said, we're going to kind of squeeze them into one, uh, you know, one relatively quick episode. Joel is in the house. You you just use that name, so I would have to say Joel is in the house when I introduce you, but Joel is in the house and Joel and Joe in the house. Uh, I do not recognize your name. So I don't um, recognize uh, seeing you here before. Uh, what brings you to Trippy Food? Um, have you been a long time watcher, first time caller? Uh, did somebody recommend it? Did you see us somewhere else? And uh, where are you from, Joe? And uh, I don't need a street address. Uh, I don't even, you know, just like closest metropolitan area. That's fine. Uh, but welcome, Joe, and everybody in the room, please give Joe is in the house a warm and hearty trippy food welcome. Uh, Sonic Jet in the in the room. Sonic, uh, you're, you're I, I think maybe between somewhere between you and um, let's say I say between you and um, Tom, old guy in Colorado, probably number two behind Janice Yamanaka for attending the most number of, um, of live streams, I think. Uh, throwing in the playing cards here right now, Val will raise you 20 chips. Uh, we don't have chips today. Uh, we have um, mostly candies and get some crackers, but no chips. Uh, let's play poker. Poker. Ah, no, I'm not going there. Um, all right. So anyways, uh, as a review, we are doing a live stream based on foods that I was able to find at um at Ikea. Now, there's two kinds of food you can find at Ikea. One is you can go to the dining area. And um, as, aside from the Swedish meatballs, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of, like, you know, specifically Swedish things. I mean, you can get salmon, but salmon is salmon, vegetables, you know. Um, every, everything else is just kind of um, maybe, I would say, generic and not necessarily Swedish per se. So the Swedish meatballs are probably the most Swedish thing you can get in there. Now, um, we did not do, uh, choose to get the frozen Swedish meatballs and make those at home because, well, for two reasons. One, we did an episode where we actually ate at Ikea and had the Swedish meatballs, so it was kind of overkill. And two, if you want to see how to make Swedish meat, good Swedish meatballs, watch uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado's uh, episode where he actually makes them from scratch. So uh, I recommend, if you guys aren't, aren't familiar with Swedish meatballs, that uh, A, check out the episode that we did at Ikea eating the Swedish meatballs, but B, was it A or one? I don't remember. Uh, but B, uh, go out to Tom's channel, Old Guy in Colorado, and watch his episode of him making Swedish meatballs from scratch. So there you go. Don't know if he had the lingonberry. I can't remember if he had the lingonberry or not, the lingonberry jelly or whatever. But uh, but yeah, go out and watch that. So what am I missing here? Oh, I always seen you on Reckless Eating and been watching your videos for a while, but I never go on the chats. I'm from Long Beach, California. Well, welcome, uh, Joe. Um, hope we make you feel comfortable here. Uh, I think um, you're the only one I know that is new. Uh, I just kind of lay out the ground rules. Um, it's pretty simple. We try we try to uh, maintain a, a family friendly channel here. Hi, Doodle. We try to maintain a, maintain a family friendly channel here. It's not family oriented. It's not uh, it's not specifically made for families. We try to make it family friendly only because we have you know we want this to be something that you can watch with your kids. Like for instance. Uh, the first two people in the chat today are my granddaughters, so they they are on, they're in the chat right now. So we try to keep it family friendly. Uh, we also don't uh, don't talk. 
We try to keep the discussion about food and travel. We try not to uh, veer from that. We definitely don't talk about religion and we definitely don't talk about uh, uh, politics because those end up in an argument. Nobody agrees on that. And so we just don't do it here. But other than that, psh, the sky's the limit. So um, welcome. We, uh, we also reviewed the lasagna egg roll a couple years ago. This we reviewed Biggie's Hot Cheetos Cheeseburger. Yeah, so um, uh, Janice, Matt did, uh, for Reckless Eating, Matt did the, uh, the Hot Cheetos Cheeseburger. So he did do that. But the thing is, I don't, I don't think we knew what you did, we, you had done. I think we, I think we did see a couple of your postings that you had done, and we, we tried to do a couple of those. But, uh, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't do them just because you did them. We just recognized that you had done them. Uh, hey, Julie Couture in the room. Welcome, Julie. Um, let's see, what am I missing? John King in the room as well. John, I assume that you are drinking a Coors Banquet. Oh, speaking of Coors Banquet, John, you will get a kick out of this. Um, I went to um, uh, uh, Total Wine and More to, to look for Coors Banquet. Uh, and um, most, most liquor stores don't have Coors Banquet. They don't have the single cans of Coors Banquet. So Total Wine and More has a case of Coors Banquet. Now, there's no way without having drank it before that I'm going to buy a case of uh, Coors Banquet. But it's really unusual that you can't, that it's, it's really a hard to find kind of thing to find that Coors Banquet. It's kind of strange. So um, I will eventually find one and taste that and see what that's all about and see why it is that you love drinking the Coors Banquet. So uh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Hi, Elmer. Who's the Elmer? I missed the Elmer. I don't see an Elmer. I love Swedish meatballs, lean cuisine, Stouffer's frozen microwave. I didn't know lean cuisine even made Swedish meatballs. That's interesting. Um, Julie, who's the Elmar? I see hi, Elmar. I don't know who Elmar is. I don't see an Elmar in there. Uh, we're shopping Ralph's so many frozen foods in the refrigerator section. Oh, okay, interesting. I'll check that out. Hi, Julie. This is the hi, Dad. I'm just getting caught up now. Um, no, Julie does not like to shop at Ralph's because Julie does not live in Southern California. Julie lives in Massachusetts. So uh, maybe she's she shops at Market Basket. Uh, maybe she shops at Stop and Shop. But uh, but definitely not Ralph's because they don't have Ralph's out there. Uh, Julie, what is the um, what is the Kroger store out in uh, Massachusetts? Because Kroger's all over the place and they have different stores underneath their umbrella. What is, what is the Kroger store in Massachusetts? Uh, let's see, uh, Albertson, Safeway, Kroger's, or Ralph's. Uh, I think they, I think they have Albertsons out there. Safeway may not go all the way out there. I know that there's Safeways like uh, in New Jersey in that area, but it, uh, no Ralph's, no, no Ralph's. In uh, let's see, just want to say enjoy your videos and also the adventure videos you have done with Reckless Eating. Tell Matt to stop <laughs> on camera. Oh, you, you're gonna have to post that. So post that on Matt's video and tell Matt to stop farting on his on camera. It's his channel, so you know he's welcome to. to I mean, you know, um, we do things differently on Trippy Food, but when I'm on Reckless Eating, you know, I'm not going to tell Matt what to do or what not to do. So, but if you, but if you don't like that, tell him. Leave a leave a um, leave a comment on his video and let him know that you you don't like when he's partying on camera. So, you know, yeah, we're not going to start doing that, but you know, don't worry about it. Did you try any of the Shark Week Bauer frozen dinners? We tried a lot of them, and they were pretty good. I did not try the Shark Week Devour frozen dinners. Um, what uh, what do they have? Like what what, what kind of uh, things do they have, Janice? Um, I want to do an episode on, uh, now I don't know that anybody that's in the room right now is old enough to remember patio Mexican TV dinners. Um, I don't even think call them TV dinners anymore. Now it's like frozen dinners and everything, but it used to be TV dinners. Uh, the concept was that you, um, uh, it had a piece of uh, paper on the top of it, but everything else was like in a foil, separated foil dish. And uh, you put it in the oven, you heated it up, and then you took your TV tray, uh, which is basically one of those folding trays. You took your TV tray and uh, you watch TV while you ate your, your TV dinner. And Patio was one, one of the companies that used to do this Mexican TV dinner. Now, they're, they're long out of business. They were bought by ConAgra a few years back, but that Con, you go to ConAgra's website, they didn't even mention it anymore. So there is no more uh, patio Mexican TV dinner, but I think I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna figure out how to make a patio Mexican TV dinner, and, uh, and we'll, do a, we'll do an episode on that. I have an important question, Val. Was your live cam recently moved to Sundays 
I think used to be on YouTube Saturdays. Uh, no Sonic, uh, no, uh, only for the past two weeks. The only past two weeks we moved to Sundays, only because I we had some scheduling conflict. So so last Saturday, um, I was supposed to go to uh, the Orange County Fair with Reckless Eating to uh, to film with Reckless Eating. So we got down there and you know got all the way down there and found that um, um, you had to have your tickets online and they were sold out. You couldn't buy tickets there. So, uh, so that was a wash. So we rescheduled it to this week, which is why I was not on last week. But I fully expect, I don't see any reason why not, I fully expect that we will be back on Saturday starting next week. So I hope that answers your question. Very important, what does Matt's part smell like? Well, el marijuano dos mil dos nueve. Uh, I don't get close enough to find out because it's, it's not my bag, baby. Hey, Peter Griffin in the room. Where did I see you not sneak in? Ah. Oh, that's right, because uh, you're in the UK, so it is evening for you. Welcome, Peter. Uh, are, are we going to be uh, joined by your um, your spouse today? Or is it just you, or are you both watching on the same thing? Uh, Katamashi, how is the orange cream milk? So, Katamashi, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you came over from Reckless Eating. I don't rec recognize the name, but, um, but the, um, in the, I think it was the San Francisco... Uh, we go main show the road trip that we did with uh, Matt Zion and Chris Reckless. Uh, we did do a stop at Bravo Farms where they had flavored milks, and I got the orange one. So uh, I was filming Matt and Chris. They were, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Chris was drinking a strawberry milk and Matt was drinking a banana milk, and I had the orange milk. But because I was filming, I'm not on camera um, dr um, drinking the orange milk. It was okay. Um, uh, it was. Uh, Almost tasted a little bit like those circus peanuts, but not as bad, not as marshmallowy, not as sweet. Um, but you know, it's okay. So, whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, I'm Chloe. Hi, I'm Pops. Um, let's see. How was your stomach after the fair? My stomach was fine after the fair, but Matt, I mean, like, it, I think it was a combination of the heat and the deep fried food and everything. He he pretty much like he hit a wall and he was like uh, I I ended up having to drive him home in his car uh, because uh, yeah because it wasn't sitting well with him. But you know I was okay I was fine. Uh, I remember patio dinners. Okay, John. So you so so uh, so you watch as we will we will at some point in time recreate a patio Mexican TV dinner. So I want to do that soon. Banquet, budget gourmet, love all frozen food, Swansons, and Stouffer's. I haven't eaten frozen foods in a long time. I just prefer to make it fresh. But, you know, when you're in a hurry and everything, that's fine. Um, Sonic, do you usually heat them up in the oven or the microwave? Which do you do? Um, let's see. They still make hot pockets. Yeah, they, they do. Um, circus peanuts are the devil. They are. They are evil. Evil, evil, evil. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to cover it circus peanuts because some people don't under, really understand what they are so we'll have to do a candy corner with circus peanuts uh, I, I, I would hate to uh, unleash that on uh, DJ on Dallas my grandson he does a lot of that candy corner episodes with me but um, I would hate to to subject him to circus peanuts but you know I need I need a second opinion Devour had uh, buffalo chicken mac and cheese that does sound pretty good uh, pesto ravioli with spicy Italian sausage nah, being Italian I might not like that so much <clears throat> Chicken corn on blue mac and cheese. That sounds interesting. And loaded cheesy. Notice the emphasis on cheese here. Loaded cheesy potatoes with Angus beef and bacon smoke. Oh, that sounds good too. Smokehouse meat and potatoes. That sound, does sound pretty good. They still making them, or is it was it a was it a, a limited time only kind of thing? I put safe plastic covers over my food trays. Oh, microwave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that you know, so you don't so things don't like explode and spatter all over the place. Maybe? Oh, exploding, yeah. Uh, it's probably cool to watch, but um, not to clean up after. Uh, hungover as hell. Enjoyed the fights. Was not worth the hangover. Uh, ah, hangovers hardly are worth the hangover. I mean, well, you know, under certain 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 circumstances. But welcome, Chris. Uh, let's see. Uh, Janice and Taisley, uh, uh, Tom, you are 19 minutes late into a, into a two-hour stream. You're here, and that's the important thing. So welcome, Tom. We were talking about you earlier, talking about your uh, Swedish meatball episode. So I was just basically saying we're not doing the Swedish meatballs today only because I'm not going to do uh, store-bought IKEA uh, Swedish meatballs, A, because we've actually eaten them at IKEA on a previous episode of Trip Food, and B, because, you know, you you raised the bar when you made those uh, Swedish meatballs from scratch. So I was directing everybody to your channel 
to uh, watch that video if they want to see what the Swedish meatballs are all about. <laughs> Tom Quat. That's it, Julie. That's going to stick. Tom Quat. That's going to stick. Hey, April Bernard in the room. Welcome, April. April, I don't recall if I've seen you in the, in the room before. Uh, are you new to the room? Is this your first time in the chat? Uh, welcome. Uh, let us know where you're from. Uh, and everybody, please make April feel welcome. Well, it looks like you've already started. Uh, Amy Cakey is also in the room. Well, I see somebody say Amy Cakey, but I don't see. Oh, there she is. Oh, hello, trippy friends. So we, uh, every time I hear Swedish meatballs, I think of Chucky. Chucky, the doll that kills people. That Chucky? Did, did he have something to do with Swedish meatballs? I don't think I've ever watched a uh, Chucky movie, so I don't know. Uh, Jesse Torres in the room. We're just picking up now. Now we got a we got a group. We might as well get started because I got. I think it boils down to six things. It looked like a lot more in the picture, but some of those things go together. Uh, Doodle is getting all panicky over here, so let's let's introduce him to anyone who doesn't know Doodle. It is the Prince of Dogness, Doodle himself. Doodle likes the meat. He 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 covets the meatballs. He can't have the meatballs though. Uh, I mean, I don't think they'd hurt him. They're uh, plant-based meatballs. I don't think they would hurt him at all. But, hey, Doodle, say hello to your adoring public. Over there. Over there, Doodle. Say hi. Close enough. How about a snack? Hmm? How about a Doodle snack? Doodle, the Prince of Dogness. Let me get him a snack. Uh, hang on, Doodle. I got your snacks. Here we go. I love my dog, too. Yes, Chucky the doll was his favorite food that Tiffany makes for him. Really? Swedish meatballs. That's interesting. The doll loves Swedish meatballs. Let's give him half. We can give him half, another half afterwards. There you go, Doodle. Bye-bye. See you soon. He'll be back. He's always back. He's so well-behaved. Well, sort of, Sonic. He... Oh, hang on a second. So, it says chat... This happened... Uh, this has happened the past couple of times. It says chat disconnected. Um, it doesn't say that the stream is disconnected. It just says the chat is disconnected, and I don't know why that is. Um, so, um, so just bear with me. I can't see what, if you're writing anything. I can't see it right now. Ah, successfully connected. We're back. I might have missed something. I don't know. Uh, so, Sonic, you said he's well behaved, but he's relatively well behaved. I can take him outside. Uh, two people walking down the street, hundred feet apart. First per and they they look relatively sim uh, similar. First person walks by. Doodle is just like. Second person. <laughs> So I don't, you know, I don't get it. I don't know what it is, but, you know, we got to work on that. Uh, what I miss? Uh, heavy breathing doodle. Uh, Papa's on the phone with Haley. Okay. Uh, I love spaghetti with meatballs, too. Yeah, who doesn't? I mean, really. I mean, seriously, who doesn't love spaghetti and meatballs? Your uh, video audio is working. Yeah, I, I knew that it was Sonic, but I get this message. It says chat disconnected. So I know that the audio and video is still going. But for some reason, the chat gets disconnected and then reconnected. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. That's kind of a weird thing. You would think the whole stream would be disconnected, but but no. Uh, hey, Kalen, uh, call it's Colin, right? Colin, like calling without the G. Colin Collins, is that right? Correct me, please. Let me know. It's it's either Callan or Colin. I'm I'm thinking it's probably Colin. Colin Collins, right? Yes? No? Let me know. Uh, but welcome back. Uh, let's see. Uh, swallow the llamas. Let's make sure I get everything. Haley is spaghetti meatballs. I know I'm working on it. John King says trippy food. Just trippy food. Okay, John. Uh, welcome to the... Oh, welcome to the wonderful world of trippy food. I get it now. Haley hates spaghetti and meatballs. Julie, did you tell her that she's Italian? Does she know? Does she know she's Italian? You get it. You get it. Wait, you're not giving her SpaghettiOs, are you? Because you and I are going to have words if you're giving her SpaghettiOs. Um, all righty, let's get started because we're already like 24 minutes in. And <laughs> oh my God, you do? Julie, you tell me you don't. Tell me you don't. I can make spaghetti meatballs on me. Yeah, uh, I can too. No, all right, all right. Scare me there for a second there because I'm Mexican and I don't like pozole is normal. Um, yeah, I suppose. Um, but I'm not a lot of things, and I do like a lot of things. Like I'm not, I'm not Korean, but I like chop chay and um, bibimbap. Um, you know, so uh, I don't know. I don't know that that you have to be of an ethnic background to like something that is part of that ethnic background. I don't know. Uh, you know. 
uh, I don't know if like like if you're inherently um, if if you're Jewish that you have to like to filter fish. I don't know. I don't know if that works. Yes, that's correct. Calling without the gene. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a guess before, but now we know. All right, so let's uh, review really quickly and get started because we're, you know, hello from Sweden, ADW in the room. That's that's cool. So, And the reason that's cool is because we're doing things that are supposed to be Swedish because they're from Ikea. But, but having you in the room, ATW, is going to be awesome because you'll be able to say, that isn't Swedish. I don't know, you know, that, and, and also you'll be able to help us with some of the translations because because some of the names of these things, I did a uh, uh, Google Translate on, and uh, they they come up with nothing. So I don't know if like IKEA just gives these names to things, uh, and they're sort of, sort of like brand names, or they're actually names of things in um, in Sweden. So ATW, you are going to be you are going to be very very useful on today's stream, and I appreciate the fact that you are here. Okay, food review time. You're right, Sonic. Uh, let's see, um, ATW. Is that sweet? It's about cracking. Oh, all right. Well, we go going back and forth on that. You got a CAD. I do got a CAD. But you. Know, so here's here's. Do you guys want me to just get like get into it, or do you want me to get to recap? I, I I will just start getting into it. And like I said, I think we have about six things. We have an alcoholic beverage and a non-alcoholic beverage, and we've got a bunch of things to eat. So so if you want, um, we'll just we'll just dive into it. You want to do that? Yes. No. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Everybody out there. Anybody? Anybody? Recap or no recap? Come on, time's a wasting. Yes, thumbs up. Okay, okay for the recap. No, Julie says no recap. So, so Colin, I, I didn't know if you're if you yes thumbs up for don't do a recap or do a recap. Sonic says recap. Janice says no recap. Julie says die right. Well, Julie already said no recap. So that's two no recaps. One recap. Anybody else? Okay. Um, Haley or Chloe, I can't remember which, uh, says recap. Colin says no recap. Sonic says it's your show. You decide. Nice. Uh, Icefish, who just snuck in the room, said no recap. Welcome. Uh, John, Of course, John King says Coors Banquet Marinade Chicken. Um, Capri, Col Chloe. All right. I think we – so I honestly – uh, and, and democratically, we have more no recaps than recaps. So we're, we, we'll just dive right in. All right. Hey, Icefish, welcome. Um, it's, kind of, it's, it's funny. You snuck in on the boat. So uh, let's start. Like Again, we have two beverages. And we have a bunch of snacks. So we'll start with our beverages. We'll start with our non-alcoholic beverage. So our non-alcoholic beverage is um, Ecologics. Ecologics. Disc, ec, ecologisk. Ecologisk. <clears throat> I'm, you know, I have no idea how that's pronounced. Ecologisk, maybe. Uh, cider Paron, Swedish pear cider beverage, organic. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, 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 all this stuff. Uh, produced in Sweden. So it is Swedish. This one is Swedish. It's produced in Sweden. Let's read a card. Yes, it is pear. A lot of stuff that they had is pear. Did you hear still reserve and old English are discontinued? I didn't know. No, I mean old English. OE. That's just like that's old school malt liquor. I'm surprised they they discontinued the OE. I might have to go out and get see if I can get some before you know, and and save that bottle. That's too bad. Well, I'm sort of too bad, and at the same time, maybe not so much. Hey, Grub Warp in the room. Welcome, Grub Warp. So our question is, our question is that we are okay. What style of pizza, so, you know, dish, Detroit, what, what style of pizza is often referred to as beach pizza? Again, what style of pizza is often referred to as beach pizza? So that goes here. Uh, let's see. All right, you guys are talking about um, uh, malt liquor. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and open this. Bar pie. Uh, no, not uh, not bar pizza, beach pizza. There is a bar pizza or bar pie. Uh, and I think that might even be another trivia question. Let me see. I think that might be a, another trivia question later on. But um, so I don't want to spoil that. I won't tell you what that is. If you know, you know. Uh, let's see. All right. So I got my glass here. Pear cider.
it's very carbonated. I don't know why I was thinking it wasn't carbonated because you know cider like apple cider. I, I, apple cider is not really carbonated. That's more like a soda, I think. Ooh, it smells like pear. It has pear juice in it. See, carbonated water, sugar, pear juice from concentrate, fermented pear juice from concentrate, fermented apple juice from concentrate, natural pear flavor, citric acid, organic. That's pretty cool. Cheers. It does look a little bit like ginger ale. It's funny because when you when you initially pour it, you get all the bubbles, but the bubbles dissipate pretty quickly, so it doesn't really taste carbonated. It does say carbonated water, but um, but those bubbles they dissipate pretty quickly. The answer is California. Maybe. How long is the stream so far? Um, so far, we've gone for 31 minutes, so we have another hour and 29 minutes to go. Canada Dry. Um, no, um, I mean, yeah, it looks like Canada, I mean, ginger, it looks like generic ginger ale. It tastes really good. It's really sweet. Pretty nice. I like that. That's going to get a thumbs up for me. Pear cider from Ikea. I and mean, I think it's it's Ikea's brand, and they put their little label on it. So it is an Ikea brand. That is our first item. So let us review our question. And our question was, what style of pizza is often referred to as beach pizza? This is going to be interesting because I thought I saw a lot of interesting um, stabs at that one. So let's see. Um, uh, okay, so Ice Fish said bar pie. Uh, and, and again, ice fish, uh, it's not not really because bar pie is another one like that. Another, uh, It's another one where a bar pie is another, it's it's a kind of style of pizza, but they call it bar pie uh, because you can find it in bars and whatever. We'll get to that. Uh, Julie says Sicilian, but like Sicilia, that kind of Sicilian. Um, let's see. The answer is California. It's a like California pizza? Um, I, I'll take that. Sand and snail pizza. Mm, I could do it without the sand, but I wouldn't eat a snail pizza. Uh, seafood pizza. That's a good guess, seafood pizza, because beach. Yeah, I would, you know, that's, that is a good guess. Julie says it's the one with the slice of provolone. Um, Amy says, my husband needs to take us to Ikea. He's never experienced before. Yeah, if you... Um, uh, you're, you're in, I think, Inland Empire, so it's a little bit of a hike for you. But if you can get out to the one in Burbank, California, it's the largest in North America. So uh, so if you're going to take them to one, take it's like the Disneyland of Ikeas. Uh, take them to the one in Burbank because it's the largest. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Icefish said rectangle pizza. Uh, that's kind of a good guess, but it's more about the shape than, than the style of pizza. Uh, are you talking about Square School Cafe Pizza? No, uh, I'm not uh, Katamashi, but uh, but that's a good guess. Katamashi, did I welcome you to the room? I think I failed to welcome you to the room because you snuck in. So welcome to the room, Katamashi. And everybody, please give Katamashi a warm and hearty, trippy food welcome. Um, Janice says New England pizza. Uh, John says Coors Banquet pizza because, of course, he does. Uh, El Marijuana says beach pizza is a style of pizza popular in the coastal communities of New England, north of Boston, particularly in Massachusetts and coastal New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, that's true. That's very true. That it's not the answer to the question, though. Uh, do you like Shakey's Pizza? I have not been to Shakey's in a very, very long time. I should probably go just to, to see if it's any good. Uh, Scallion Pizza? No. Adam Hebb, who's snuck into the room. Welcome, Adam. Uh, Ontario on the... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'm supposed to get on Kia soon. Well, uh, let's see. I, lo uh, I love pizza. I love pizza, too. All right. So um, Janice, uh, El Marwano, you're, you're correct and at the same time not correct. So basically, um, it, you are correct that that's where you would get, you would find beach pizza is in New England, is New England. Uh, and the reason they call it beach pizza is because it's basically served in that, you know, that corridor that runs along, you know, the, the coast. Uh, so that's why they call it beach pizza. But the style of pizza is Sicilian. So whoever said Sicilian, I think it was Julie, said Sicilian. You're absolutely correct. Um, so Julie, give yourself 20 points. The rest of you give yourself 20, 10 points. 
Um, and then, you know, write that down somewhere because I'm not keeping track. All right, there we go. Uh, Tombstone Pizza. Uh, Giordino's? You mean Giordano's? Uh, Sonic? Sicilian is not is rectangle, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sicilian is thicker and it is rectangular. You are correct. Ice fish. All right, so uh, let us start into our, fir our first snack. I think what we're gonna, I think we're gonna do the meatballs first. So the idea with the meatballs was, um, again, uh, I didn't want to go into the into the restaurant, get anything, and bring that out. I, I wanted to to buy things that were in the little grocery there, I, or get the seventy-five cent hot dog. I wanted to go uh, in the, in the grocery. Now, again, uh, I wanted to do the meatballs, but I didn't want to do the the regular Swedish meatballs for two again two reasons. One, we already did a trippy food episode where we ate the Swedish meatballs at IKEA. Two. Um, if you want to see, like, uh, you want some really good Swedish meatballs or, or watch a video on re a real good Swedish meatballs, watch Tom's uh, episode on Swedish meatballs. So I got the plant-based ones, which I think they call plant balls. So it's like uh, plant-based alternative meatball based on textured pea pro protein frozen. Doesn't that sound tasty? They need, to, they need to, to kind of give it some sort of name. Now, they call this... Um, Huvu Droll. Huvu Droll, I think that's how you would pronounce that. Um, so uh, I, it's probably not. Uh, this is interesting because uh, the ingredients are pea protein, uh, rapeseed oil, potatoes, binder mix, crumbs, rice flour, uh, salt, pea starch, pea protein, it's mostly peas, onion, oat bran, oat bran, uh, emulsifier, binder, mix, pea starch, natural flavoring, mushroom concentrate, dried apple. That's interesting. Salt, tomato powder, black pepper, and allspice. That sounds pretty decent. Produced for IKEA of Sweden by Amlut of Sweden. Product of Sweden. So, um, so I made those. Uh, uh, popped in the oven for 20 minutes, I think it is. Um, and then um, I also got the gravy that you put on top of it, which they also sell in the little grocery at Ikea. And um, the ingredients are potato starch, palm oil, uh, flavoring, salt, apple powder, there's apple in that too, yeast extract, caramel syrup, glucose syrup, sugar, maltodextrin, milk protein, sodium caseinate, uh, onion powder, garlic, bay leaves, white pepper, turmeric, and paprika. Contains wheat and milk. May contain eggs. And that's one cracks me up, may contain eggs. So there's no eggs in the ingredient, but it may contain eggs. We, we just might feel like throwing some eggs in there. What the hell? When we're making it, let's just throw some eggs in there. May contain eggs. So here's the thing. We are eating plant-based meatballs that doesn't have any like meat byproducts in it. And we are putting this gravy on it, which is not, but which definitely has, you know, milk, may contain egg. Uh, so uh, it is not vegan. If you just eat the meatballs the way they are without the, the gravy on it, I guess it would be vegan, but it's not. Uh, what did I, uh, you get, you gave yourself a timeout. I don't know what you said, uh, El Marijuano, but that's okay. Uh, we're, we're all on the same page here. Sounds good. Let's see. Uh, Domino's is okay. Papa John's is too salty. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't do Papa John's for a multiple, multitude of reasons, which we won't get into right now. Uh, in the UK, we have Pizza Express and it's very nice. Now, now they do deliver it. Oh, okay. Uh, which pizza chain do you like, Val, or anyone in here? Oh, so you guys, they're already talking about it. Pizza chain do I like? Giordano's. Giordano's is my favorite pizza chain. Well, uh, it depends on what you mean by chain. So if a chain is more than one, if it's two, then I'm going to say Santarpios, but only like the original one. Uh, let's see. What I, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I missed food in London. Did I get pizza there? Um, the thing about the food in London, Julie, is when is when you went, the food was much better than like you, like you go back like maybe forty years. Uh, the UK was not known for their food, and they were they were kind of like you know people kind of looked down on the food. I think it was the the um, the kind of gastropub movement in the nineties that kind of brought um, brought the UK up you know up to where they were making decent food and everything. So it is a it is a great food place now. Um, you know. Uh, I think maybe a lot of that is because a lot of people don't like, you know, organ meats and stuff like that. Me, I do. So, you know, I always like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, it's, so this is going. The, the chat is really going this way. Uh, Crown meatballs with grape jelly and ketchup. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, you lost me on the ketchup, though. Um, 
Let's see. Hey, John King. Okay, Ice Fish. Okay, all right, good. We're caught up. So before we dig into these meatballs, let's ask a question. And our question is, what restaurant chain was known for their A-frame buildings? Again, what restaurant chain was known for their A-frame buildings? So that goes on the uh, back burner there with the sauce. And let's dig into these meatballs. Well, plant balls, not meatballs. They're actually not meatballs. They're plant balls. Kind of a weird texture. Still savory. I think the mushrooms. I think was was it mushrooms in the sauce? Mushroom. I think it was mushroom. Maybe a mushroom in both. The mushroom makes it savory. Doesn't taste like meat though, but it is savory. The texture. Texture is like a potato ball. It's mostly pea protein. These are pretty good. I would not tell somebody that this is like, um, like, hey, these taste just like meatballs, because they don't. But they're actually pretty good on their own. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Yeah, like I said, well, I was going to say they're not pretending to be meat. They are pretending to be meat. That's their their sole, sole purpose for existing, is pretending to be meat. Um, I will tell you that I will tell you that um, Ikea also does veggie balls, and they're not good because it um, it tastes like bad falafel because it, it's it's like it tastes like there's grass in it or something. It's just really not good. But these are pretty good, so that's going to get thumbs up for me. All right, what I miss, Norms. Oh, I don't like Norms Sonic Jet. Norms to me is like one of those bad. Family restaurants, you know, I think it's called like a family restaurant. You go in there and it's like a bunch of old people sitting around eating bland, overcooked food. That's norms to me. Anyway. Oh, that was your guess. I'm sorry. That was your guess about the A-frame. Yeah, let's go back to our question. Our question, which was what, what restaurant chain was known for their A-frame buildings? And the answers were, uh, let's see, where did those answers start? So Julie said Hojo's. Uh, Sonic said norms. I think that's what the guess was. Uh, Jesse says Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, Jenna says Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, Sonic says or Denny's. Uh, let's see. Building window design. Well, not the window design, the building itself. So an A-frame, uh, in architectural terms, an A-frame is like a chalet. Uh, you usually see them in the mountains. They make them that way because um, because that way the snow slides off the top of them and doesn't build them the top. So it's basically a building that's like that shape. And again, they, they specifically do that in the mountains so that snow doesn't collect on the top of those and snow slides down off the top of them and they're, they're high peaked. So some, uh, maybe some US food chains have done that, uh, restaurant chains, I'm sorry, have done that, but there's one that's famous for being in A-frame buildings. Um, so that was kind of the question. Uh, 1950s dingers, diners. Uh, no, uh, 1950s diners are typically in train cars. So they're in training. Uh, uh, they're in train cars that get moved around and then you know put up on blocks and and that's that's what uh, diners are famous for. They're being built into train cars. Uh, John King says IHOP. Uh, Tom retracted his message, so we'll never know what he said. Well, you guys might. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, <laughs> Dirk watching it. So, <laughs> um, I like the way Julie says Hojo equals Howard Johnson, just in case anybody doesn't know, because they're not around anymore. Uh, Wiener Schnitzel, Chorus Banquet. What is it? What, what is the chat dying? What is the chat dying? Is the chat dying? I don't know. Uh, what are the spinning from your ceiling? Top right corner. Those? That? Those are dragons from Bali. Uh, wooden carved dragons from Bali. Uh, just noticed. Uh, with the drive through Peter, it's paper dragon. No, it's not paper. It's wood. They're carved wood uh, from Bali. Uh, the correct answer of what restaurant chain is known for their A-frame buildings was IHOP. IHOP was specifically build their, their, uh, their restaurants in A-frame buildings. 
Um, they don't really anymore. So now, you, now a lot of them are just you know building shape buildings. But uh, when, when the chain first opened, uh, they everyone was specifically in a uh, A-frame building. Now some of the ones like uh, Wiener Schnitzel, it's a good guess because a lot of the Wiener Schnitzels are in A-frame buildings. Right? And I have noticed that a lot of Wiener Schnitzels are in A-frame buildings, but they're not known for that. Um, IHOP is the one that is known for that. Um, there was a couple. Somebody mentioned another one. I think it, maybe Julie mentioned. Uh, it was Julie that mentioned Hojo's. Uh, Hojo's is not really famous for uh, being in the A-frame. Uh, they have high-peaked roofs, roofs, or did what is a youth? Um, they had high-peaked roofs, but not quite A-frame. Not that. Not as big as the ones at uh, IHOP. So the answer, the correct answer, is in fact IHOP. Goes in the back of the deck. That's uh, 20 points to anyone who got it right, 25 points for anyone who got it wrong, and 30 points for anybody who didn't even answer at all. Make sure you write that down. Keep track of that. All right, uh, let's do another snack. So um, let's do like another couple of snacks, and then we'll open our alcoholic beverage. So uh, let's see. What are we going to do first? Uh, let's get the let's get the as long as we're on savory and everything, let's get that on out of the way, and then we'll get into our sweets. We might want sweets after this. So uh, we are going to do uh, knack broad. And I don't think knack broad is a, uh, is a, like a uh, name they gave it or anything. I think that's a real thing, knack broad, which is like a, it's like a big uh, crisp bread. It's a rye crisp bread. I think that's rag, I think is the uh, Swedish word for rye because they have different, different varieties, but it's, it's, it's a rye crisp bread. And we are going to put on that this which is Kalas, 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 Kalas. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, Kalas. Yes, we will, uh, Janice, I'm just introducing the uh, the food and then we'll read the card before you actually open it. Thank you, Janice. So, um, so uh, this uh, Kalas creamed smoked roe. I know it looks like toothpaste, but it's not toothpaste. Uh, it is uh, creamed smoked cod roe um, in, um, in, Sweden, it's called caviar with a K or smorgas caviar. Uh, it is made by Abba Seafood in Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, the company was established in Bergen in 1838. Uh, Swedish ca caviar, not caviar, caviar is a fish egg spread it's made with salted cod roe, sugar, canola, oil, oil, and spices. The two most common ways to eat Swedish caviar is either with boiled eggs or on sandwiches. Well, we're not going to kind of do either today. We're going to put it on knack broad. So let me go ahead and uh, read a card. All right. So uh, you guys will, now you guys, this will make sense. What is bar pizza and where would you find it? Again, the question, what is bar pizza and where would you find it? That goes on the back burner, I guess. You guys know there's no back burner there. You guys know I'm not even reading from the card. It's all fake. It's all Hollywood. Uh, so let's go ahead and open our knack broad uh, crisp bread. No, they're not honey wheat crackers. They're rye crackers. So if you ever had rye crisp, those are rye crackers, but those have more. Those have more like fiber in it. These are kind of smoother. What did I miss? Okay, so we were talking about the dragon. We got that. Uh, I love those from Nabisco. Oh, honey wheat crackers from Nabisco. Okay, uh, toothpaste. It does look like toothpaste, Julie. You're right. What about smoked pox? Smoked pox? Do you mean lox? Pox? I don't think anyone's going to eat smoked pox. We call crackers like that sagos. After you dunk them in Kool-Aid, they get very soggy. They do. Any cracker you dump, dunk in Kool-Aid is going to get soggy. Smoked lox fish. It's not lox. Lox is salmon. This is cod, and it's roe. Roe is the eggs. Actually, roe ro technically is the egg sack filled with eggs. But um, I think they're just the eggs in here. So uh, this is cod row is uh, cod eggs. That's what this is. But uh, no, not uh, not and not lox because lox is again salmon. Green cheese cracker smoked lox. That is good. Not gonna lie. At the bar, kid. Uh, that's funny. Two bucks. All right, people are answering questions. That's good. We'll leave that there. All right. Uh, some butter on the neck brought. Also, we don't have butter. I didn't bring butter. I didn't know. So, well, so you mean? Would, so would you say just just butter on the neck brat or butter on the neck brat and then uh, the uh, the smoke bro? ATW. Which one? Which one? What would? How would you recommend eating this? 
I mean, we're kind of like making this up. So we're just, we just want some sort of palette to put this on. And that's why I decided on these is we're just kind of going to do that. All right. So I don't know how familiar people are with rye. It's a, it's a, not a, a really, really popular grain. It's not up there with corn or wheat. Uh, it's, it's behind rice even. Kind of like a like a rye crisp cracker. I would recommend eating it by throwing that tube in the trash. Julie, have you had that before? Butter and callus. Oh, okay, cool. On on bread or on the on this? Because I I'll have some left over. I'll have to eat it like that later. Let's go ahead and open this. And I I'm guessing. See that little point there? I'm guessing you do you know kind of do that. Which opens up the tube. I think that's right. Yep, that is right. The tube has now been opened. Looks like cheese whiz. I hear doodle. Maybe doodle can smell the cod row. Maybe that's what it is. I think you kind of smear that a little bit. I predict this is going to be salty as hell. That's just me, though. Cheers. I don't really look like crazy glue, because crazy glue is kind of clear. And this is definitely like orangey. An orangey paste. Val, fix my bicycle. Thanks. You're welcome. Mayo and fish. Oh, come on, Peter. Have you? Oh, um, I, again, you're in the UK. So here, you have a tuna fish sandwich. Tuna fish is generally made. A tuna fish sandwich is generally made with mayo. So you mix uh, can, a canned tuna with some mayo. Some people put mustard in there, um, and some people put other stuff in there, like relish. Some people, uh, some people put uh, black pepper. Some people put grated cheese in there. But you know, basic is uh, mayo and um, and uh, tuna fish, and then you just spread that on the bread. So mayo and fish, yeah. I mean, that's um, everybody's idea of of uh, tuna fish sandwich. The blue tube container. I'm saying, you're saying. Oh, yeah, because it looks like the stuff that you fix the bike tires with. It does. You're absolutely right. I forgot about that. Been a while since I fixed the bike tire. This is salty. It's not. Well, I was going to say it's not really fishy. After the second bite, it starts to get fishy. John King, you're right. It does look like it could be made from, from uh, kumquats because it is that almost that orangey color. It should be banned. The more you eat it, the saltier it gets, and the more fish it gets. So it almost has that anchovy taste. It almost tastes like anchovies. So I happen to like anchovies, and it doesn't taste, but good anchovies. This doesn't taste like bad anchovies, but it's a little bit. Um, it's a little strong and it's a little hard to get used to. I, I can see where butter would definitely tame this. I'm gonna give that a thumbs on the middle because I can see where this would scare a lot of people and and you, you would get tired of the taste relatively quickly. But again, uh, part of it is the saltiness, the the the, the overly over salt, overly salty, the overly saltiness of it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give that a thumbs on the middle. Um, I will I will probably eat this, but I will eat it sparingly. And then, and I will probably put some butter on it to see how that goes. But I'm not gonna go get it right now. Bye, Julie. Oh, taking the kids to dinner. I miss you. Have a great weekend. You too, Julie. Give me a call. Miss you. And I love you. Bye. Um, Val, I love the Lunchable crackers. They give you this cute little red stick for spreading the cheese. Wouldn't that be funny if they made Lunchables with this? That would be funny. At first. All right. Thumbs in the middle. So, let's go back to our card. 
And the question was, what is bar pizza and typically where you would find it? Janice had a thin pizza pie pan cooked from Eddie's Pizza in Hyde Park, New York. That's very descriptive. Um, let's see, do we, uh, New Haven, Icefish said New Haven. It is not really New Haven. New Haven uh, pizza is a, is a completely separate thing. It's not really New Haven pizza. Um, let's see, were there any other answers? I don't see any. You, you guys let me know if you didn't see them. Uh, bar pizza is typically found in bars and pubs in the Northeast. It is usually smaller, uh, typically 10 inches in diameter, and cooked in a pan. So um, that's, the, that's the big difference between bar pizza. So when we get back out to, to New England, we're going to have to have a, a bar pizza and see what that's all about. I lived in, I lived in uh, the Boston area for 20-something years, but I never had a bar pizza. So there we go. It is good on boiled eggs. Yeah, ATW, that's what that's what they say too. So I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna try have to try that on boiled eggs as well. I'll, I'll boil them. I mean, I got a whole tube, right? I got time. I wonder how it would taste with marmite. What do you think, Peter Griffin? What do you think? Have that on put that on on, on bread with marmite and butter. Hey, Amira Coleman in the room, everybody. Please give Amira Coleman a well warm and hearty trippy food welcome. And please let me know, Janice, let me know. Did I miss anybody? Did anybody sneak in the room while I was busy yapping? Have some more of this pear beverage. Let's see. We knocked down two of the, um, let's see. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do the pastry next, and then we'll get into the sweet stuff. So we'll do the pastry, then we'll open our, our alcoholic beverage, and we'll get into the sweet stuff. So our uh, pastry is uh the company is called i'm, I'm thinking it's poggin I, I could be pronouncing that wrong but it's poggin and the product is giflar and giflar is a uh, their little cinnamon buns and so uh these have been around for a long time uh let's see um poggin's bakeries are located in malmo and gothenburg uh anders and matilda paulson began baking and selling bread in Malmo in 1878. So this, they've been doing this for a while, in eight, since 1878. They're little, they're little um, cinnamon buns. So uh, also do vanilla custard. Wait, Giflar also do vanilla custard ones. They sell them in uh, Onda stores. In the, oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, Ikea does not have that, but that sounds really good with vanilla custard. Unless you, I wonder if you could get... Uh, the the bird's custard sauce, you know, the one that you make from the powder. If you get the bird's custard sauce and you put the custard sauce on this, would that be good? Ice fish, what do you think? Does that work? Um, so vodka and the pear cider, nice. Well, we do have an alcoholic beverage, ice fish, coming up. So we'll figure something out. You know how we work, how we roll here. Uh, hey, Dan, back in the room. Holy moly, it's been a long time since I caught a trip to food live stream. It has been. I uh, just got out of the shower after spreading seven yards of topsoil, replaced my entire septic system, tank, and leach field. Wow, that's a lot of work. You know, well, you, you live on a, on a farm, and it's a, a farm. It, people have no idea. They do not realize, even if it's a small family farm, people have no idea how much work a farm can be. But welcome, Dan. It's good to see you again. Glad you could join us. All right, so we're going to, this is what we're going to dig into, but. As always, question first. All right. And the question is, what North Carolina dish similar to Scrapple must contain at least 30% pork liver? Again, what North Carolina dish similar to Scrapple must contain at least 30% pork liver? That goes over here on the burner, whatever you want to call it. There's nothing there. It's on the computer's uh, keyboard and everything, but you know, but we like to pretend here. So let's pretend it's on the back burner. Let's pretend we're turning that knob. You guys can't see what my hand's doing. You don't know. Uh, thanks, you're glad to be here. Well, we're glad you are here. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and open these up. I'm looking forward to these. Well, I, I'm sort of looking forward to these. I think they're imported. Um, well, they are imported. Um, so they're not gonna be fresh. It's not like a, a fresh baked cinnamon bun or cinnamon roll would be, that would be awesome. You know, if there was a local bakery that made these, that would be awesome. I know it's uh, it's uh, Danish and not Swedish, but I wonder if they make something like this at, at, at in the, those bakeries up in Solvang. You can smell the cinnamon in it. 
Microwave them for five seconds. Well, ice fish, that's problematic because I don't have a microwave. Come on, you can put it in the oven though. Put it in the oven for a couple minutes. Will that work? John King, you're making two guesses. Stick with one. Pick one of those two. Liverwurst or liver and onions. Pick one. Let us know. Preheat an oven for three minutes. I have a whole bag. I can do that. I'm going to take your word for it, ice fish. They are easy to eat too many. I can see why. They're really, really good. So if you're expecting these to be like a Cinnabon kind of thing, they're not. Um, Cinnabon's are really sticky and really ultra, ultra, ultra sweet. This is nice. It's like a, it's like a, like a cinnamon paste that's in there, but it's not... It's not sticky or overpowering or overly sweet and everything. The uh, the bread is nice and spongy, not stale. Really, really good. Thumbs way up on that one. These are really, really good. I can see where you would eat a lot of these. Absolutely right. A whole bag gone in four minutes. I can see that. We don't we don't have four minutes to waste eating this whole bag. We got other stuff to do. No, we're down to our candies, I think. But you're absolutely right. Um, very good. These are awesome. So again, if you get, if there's an Ikea next near you, go out and get those. Now, those of you in, in Europe are probably fortunate enough to be able to go to go to a, like a real Swedish, um, grocery or something and be able to find it. Are there other Swedish groceries? I mean, like, like I would imagine that the Ikea grocery part, the grocery part of Ikea is probably a, somewhat Americanized, but, uh, but in, in other parts of Europe, like in the UK, are there Swedish groceries where you can get Swedish um, you know, Swedish items and everything. Uh, UK people, what do you think? All right, let's go to our question. Our question was, what North Carolina dish, similar to Scrapple, must contain at least 30% pork, liver, and uh, John King said liverwurst and liver and onions. He will stick with liver and onions. Okay, so John King said liver and onions. Um, Janice said liver mush. I think that was it. I didn't see anybody else answer that question. The correct answer is, in fact, liver mush. You are absolutely right, Janice. It is a North Carolina specialty, a North Carolina favorite liver mush. Um, it's usually like uh, served in a brick, and some people make a sandwich out of it. Uh, some people put jelly on it um, uh, and mustard. Some people put mustard on it. So you know, sort of, sort of like scrapple. You're absolutely right, Janice. And it was, in fact, uh, liver mush. So Janice, give yourself 30 points. Uh, John, for participating and saying twice, give yourself 60 points. And um, the rest of you uh, give yourself 80 points. And then, you know, write that down. Make sure you're tallying that because I'm going to keep track. That goes back in the deck. I'm going to eat another meatball because that's how I roll. I'm sorry, plant ball. Have to be specific. It is not a meatball. There's no meat in here. They're cold now. They're still not bad. I think this would be satisfying to somebody who wants meat, wants to taste the meat. It doesn't taste like meat. It definitely doesn't taste like meat, but I think it would be satisfying, at least satisfying to me. Yeah, it's pretty good. John King, you thought you heard somebody sneeze? Well, it could have been Mrs. Trippy Food, Claudia, in the other room sneezing, and I would go in there and say Gesundheit or Salud or even bless you, but we're in the middle of live stream. In the event you're watching this from the other room, bless you. Gesundheit. Salud. Uh, okay. Uh, not really any Swedish places to go. Maybe um, Bougie? Bougie? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But uh, um, John King was <laughs> Wow. I'd be scared of doodle sneeze like that. Hey, Robert Ginn in the room. Welcome, Robert. Good to see you again. Welcome back. That would have lifted doodle off the ground. I sometimes wonder if she, if, if, like, if he's going to helicopter one of these days because his, like, when his little tail goes, you know, I always expect his back end to like raise up off the ground with his little tail going. So maybe someday that'll be fun. Um, Hoover droll, leading roll, which is a strange name for a meatball. Oh, is that is that what it is? That apparently means leading roll. That is a strange name. Not a meatball, a plant ball, but you did do the air quote, so 
I got what you're saying, ATW. All right. Um, so let us, let's see, we got, uh, we got our, um, our um, candies left. We got an hour. We got plenty of time. We're really good. Really good on time. So let's do it. That pear taste really grows on you. So let's do this. Um, let's prepare to open up our, our alcoholic beverage. And this is uh, Recorder Leg. Recorder Leg. Recorder Leg. Not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Recorder Leg. Uh, premium Swedish hard cider. It is 110 calories. This is passion fruit flavor. Natural and artificially flavored passion fruit hard cider. Naturally gluten gluten. Glu You'd think I'd already had some alcohol. Naturally gluten-free, vegan, vegan friendly, imported, 4.5% alcohol by volume. Uh, and I think I saw something in the ingredients. Water, hard cider, sugar, less than 2% natural and artificial flavors, citric acid, caramel color. Caramel color? It's clear. What caramel color? There's no caramel color in there. Uh, colored with carrot and grape juice. No, it's not colored with carrot and grape juice. It's clear. That must be like a stock in, uh, ingredients thing, like all, because they had different flavors and stuff. So maybe it's just like a stock thing they put on there, but it's not uh, colored with anything because it has no color. Uh, sodium citrate, malic acid, potassium, sorbitol, uh, product of Sweden, imported by Total Beverage Solution in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And um, contains 0% juice. So that's satisfying. Now, we have Richard Simmons. We're going to utilize Richard Simmons because it has a bottle cap that I want to see. So let's go ahead and read a card. <clears throat> and the question is, what is the culinary name? And when I say culinary name, let's see, what would be an example? Uh, culinary name would be um, like um, uh, escargot is the culinary name for snails. And the reason they give it a culinary name is because somebody says, hey, would you like to try the snails today? And everyone's going to say no. But if you say, would you like to try the escargot today? People might say yes. So what is the culinary name for beef or lamb thymus glands? Dan, you probably know this. What is the culinary name for beef or lamb thymus glands? So that goes on the front. I'm going to put that on the front burner just to be different. Let's see, did I miss anything here? Um, uh, let's see, uh, we talked about doodle, we talked about his tail, uh, I keep usually use random Swedish words and names for their products. Yeah, because no, who knows, right? I mean, if I walk into an Ikea and I see Jörgersmann as one of the product names, I don't know that it's a real name or a made up name or anything to me, you know, I just look at it. So they probably do. They probably just random or arbitrarily give, you know, give names like that. Uh, kind of looks like vodka or gin. I suppose it also kind of looks like water. Hey, Firefly59 in the room. ATW, I will never know what you had said, but you retracted it. That's okay. I respect you for that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and open that. I don't know if this is, I don't remember if this is carbonated or not. It's hard cider, which means it is fermented and it is alcoholic. What's up with you, Firefly? Good to see you back. Julie's not here to rate my pour, but I don't I don't think this counts. It smells like soda. It doesn't smell like passion fruit. It is very bubbly. And it is very clear. So I don't know. Colors, there's no color in it. Cheers. Hmm. It has kind of like this syrupy sweetness that's not pleasant. Almost tastes like, like, I think that one of the ingredients was sugar, but it tastes like it's artificially sweetened. But it could be the alcohol. It could be because there's alcohol in there. The alcohol mixed with that sugar. Kind of makes it taste like artificial. It's not pleasant. There's not enough passion fruit flavor in there to offset that. And so again, it's like a, it's like uh, it's almost like um, 
like a monk fruit uh, kind of uh, syrupy kind of thing. The alcohol and the sugar just aren't aren't mixing very well. It's not um, it's not a, a great taste. Um, watching TV and going shopping at for lunch at work. Are you you're going shopping? Are you shopping right now, Firefly? While you're watching this. With all the smoke from the fires in California, the air quality is so bad here that they are calling it a health risk and not to work outside if possible. Yeah, uh, Tom, uh, Julie, who lives in Massachusetts, was uh, she was showing me some pictures that the smoke from, from uh, not California per se, but California and Southern Oregon, both, because they're they're pretty big. The one in Oregon is even bigger than the one in California. But the smoke from California and Oregon <clears throat> is so bad that it's actually gotten east. It's actually in Massachusetts. And actually, it just kind of like darkens the sky a little bit. So yeah, it uh, it travels. So yeah, good times. And you being closer, I am. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think if you watch, if you look at a satellite photo of of the United States, you probably see that cloud just kind of like going like this across the United States. So that's that's what we have to deal with. I forgot the stream was today. That's okay. I forgot the stream was ye yesterday. No, I mean typically. We do it on on um, Saturdays, but the past couple of weeks we haven't changed it. We will be back to Saturday next weekend, by the way. Watching TV right now and the live. I'll be shopping later. I bet. Oh, okay. I'm not. No, I don't. I don't. I'm not liking this. Um, uh, from an alcoholic beverage standpoint, it doesn't taste like a mix. It does. It doesn't have that like that kind of um, alcohol kick to it. Uh, what really overlays the whole thing is this kind of syrupy, artificially sweet kind of flavor, and there's not enough passion fruit flavor to offset that. So I'm, this one's going to get a thumbs down. But it is from Sweden, and uh, and apparently, um, again, IKEA does not have to serve, uh, sell alcoholic beverages, and um, Total Wine and More says there's no such thing as a Swedish beer. So that's we did what we had to do. Uh, they are, let's see, where are they? Oh, Vimmerby, 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 Sweden. They they have been selling this since 1966 in Vimmerby, Sweden. So that's where it comes We need more tipsy pizza reviews. Maybe so. So here's the here's my problem, Stoner. Um, I, I agree, it's probably entertaining. The uh, um, the problem is that uh, that I don't trust my judgment when I'm tipsy. So in other words, I could I could be uh, I could be. I, I I might not be accurately tasting the um, you know the pizza, so it what might be it might be good to do a tipsy crappy pizza review right so like uh, like you know if I'm doing some crappy pizza that might be good to do like that uh, but you know it's entertaining we'll see how's Doodle uh, Doodle came in earlier I think um, eventually he'll stop back in again and we'll give him some more snacks and then we'll pick him up again because why not because we have other people in the room Val you need to do a kumquats review John. You don't remember when we did kumquats? Because we actually did on the live stream. We actually had kumquats. You don't remember? We did. We did kumquats. John, honestly, you don't remember? Or maybe you weren't there that week. Maybe that's what it is. Because you were out for a few. You were you were away for a few weeks. So maybe it was one of the weeks that you were away. We did it. But it's already uh, it's already up, and we saved them. So uh, go to the uh, go to the YouTube channel. And then uh, look at the uh, for the live streams that have been recorded, and you'll see that you know you'll see the picture of the kumquats. Just go ahead and watch that. And there we go. Okay, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say thumbs thumbs down on that. I'm, I'm not really enjoying it that much. So there we go. Our question, however, our question was, what is the culinary name for beef or lamb thymus glands? And the answers were, uh, Ice Fish said sweetbread. Uh, Jedis Yamanaka said sweetbread. Um, John King said banquet and why? Moi. Uh, I think those are all the answers. Those are the only answers. The correct answer is in fact sweetbreads, which are neither sweet nor breads. So if you ever go to a restaurant and you see sweetbread on the menu, they're not going to bring you out pan dulce. They will not bring that out to you. You're not going to have like these nice little sweet little bread rolls of bread. They're going to bring you out either a lamb or a beef. Uh, or a uh, cattle's thymus gland. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, actually, it's very, it's delicious. Um, it, as long as you don't know what it is that you're eating, like if you're one of those visual people and somebody says, oh, it's thymus gland, you're probably not going to order. But if you actually just eat it and taste it and everything, it's actually very, very good. One of my favorites. 
it. So there we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. This wasn't great. Maybe this will make it better. We'll see. Is that about half and half, I think? It does. It does, and it's probably because that there's not as much alcohol when you water it down, and so that alcohol battling with the sugar isn't bad. Um, also, the, the taste of pear is really strong, and you also get that little hint of apple that comes in act afterwards from the cider, um, and uh, and a little bit that that hint of passion fruit that's in there. That actually makes a, a pretty decent beverage. Mixing it's probably a good idea. So there we go. Who knew? I didn't know. Now we do. Kumquat pineapple upside down cake. Yeah, that would work. That would definitely work. It's, uh, kumquat is just another citrus fruit, John. Uh, I don't know about how, uh, cooking with it, though, because um, I think generally the idea is to uh, is to squeeze out the inside and not to eat the... Um, wait, I'm trying to remember. Is to eat the outside and not eat the inside because the inside is more bitter or more sour than the outside. And the outside is the sweet part. So I don't know how that would work. I guess uh, I guess you could kind of like uh, finely grate it, um, sort of like lemon zest or orange zest, and then use that to, to uh, flavor the cake. That would actually probably be really good, a con uh pineapple upside down cake. I think that would probably be really good. So I'm going to move this over there. Even though it's good and it's better, I don't think I'm going to drink that. So there we go. And I'm certainly not going to chug that. Let's see, I got my cider, my, my cider here. So now all we got left is the candies. We got 45, um, like about 45 minutes left. So we're in good shape. I have two fans on. I actually have an air conditioner in here, but I don't have that on because it's very, very loud. So I have the two fans on. Would you guys let me know if you think it's too loud in here? Kumquat whiskey sours. That would be good too. That would be That would be really good too, I think. And then you would you would actually use the inside of the kumquat because it's sour. You don't care if it's sour. So yeah, John, that would work. All right, I'm gonna have another plant ball. All right, so I got um, two chocolate ones and two candy candy ones. Let's see. Um, I'm not a huge fan of chocolate, so I'm gonna start with the chocolate ones. So let's start with this one. And this is damn, damn. Dame! There's three in here. Uh, uh, Dame, I think is how it's pronounced. Dame chocolate candy was created by the company Marabou in Sweden in 1952. And they've been making it ever since then. Uh, this is, uh, uh, it is not Dame 3, like the sequel to Dame 2. Uh, it is not Dame 3. It is uh, Dame 3 pack. So there are three of the actual bars in there. I don't know if you can see that. Can I see that? Oh. Good, we have two for later. So before I open this, I will read it. Have you added new, any, any new collectibles to the cabinet behind you? I have. Would you like me to show you, Peter? Keep waiting for an answer. Yes or no? It's okay. I accept both or either. Would you like me to show you the new collectible in there? Yes. All right. Glad you asked. I'm not, but, you know, it works out that way. We've added one since we reviewed those. Um, the uh, I don't know if you can see it up there is my crystal skull, and it has my bottle caps in it. So we do have more bottle caps in there. But you know, you've seen me open the bottle caps on my stream. But this one is new. So this, let's see. I thought it said what it was on there, but it does not. This is a little metal uh, statue of Coit Tower in San Francisco. I got this at Coit Tower in San Francisco when I was doing a road trip with Matt Zion and Chris Reckless for Reckless Eating's We Go Main Show in San Francisco. So uh, actually, it, it was it was kind of funny because I had contacted Coit Tower before we left and said, hey, are you guys open? Because I see it on the website. It doesn't look like you're open. And then he said, no, we're not open. And I, and I said, well, we're going to be there uh, next weekend. Do you think it'll be open there? I'm like, no, probably not going to be open until August. I'm like, OK, that's fine. So when we got to San Francisco, we were down by uh, on, on the Embarcadero, 
And by the Embarcadero is the Filbert Steps. And the Filbert Steps, there's something like 400 stairs on the Filbert Steps that go up to Coit Tower. So we thought, we thought, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll go up the Filbert Steps because that in itself will be a fun thing to do. Um, if you hate yourself, it's a fun thing to do. Um, so we will, we will do that. We'll go up to the top and we will just kind of like sit at the base of the tower because the views out there of, uh, of uh, San Francisco Bay are spectacular. So we thought we would do that. It turns out while we were there that they were actually open. So we actually got tickets. We went up to the top, that little observation thing up the top, and um, and enjoyed Coit Tower. So I got this as a souvenir. And so that is one of the things that um, that we didn't cover and that we got since last time. Hope that helps. Uh, we'd love to see them. Yeah, that was it. Uh, Peter and Janice, just that. So, uh, Doodle is back. So for those of you who just came in and have not met Doodle, here is the Prince of Dogness, Doodle. It's Doodle. It's Doodle. Hi, Doodle. Doodle, do you want a snack? Is that why you're back? You want a snack? Hmm? Say hi. Say hi to your adoring public. You gonna say hi? No. Okay. You can get a snack. I saved you a piece. What did I do with that? Put it back in the bag. And I will give him a doodle snack. There you go, doodle. And off he goes. No loyalty. He is loyal to the chicken tenders. Okay, so uh, let us go ahead and open the dame. Um, it's I think it's uh, milk chocolate candy with crunchy caramel almond center. That sounds pretty good. I'm not even a big fan of caramel, but it sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead and open that. Oh, okay. We're good. I was expecting, you know, like one of those things where you open it up and then you get like, you three pieces, but you're like, oh, how am I going to put this in a plastic bag? Individually wrapped. You can't beat that with a blunt object. All right. So here we go with our individually wrapped Dame chocolate bar. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's calories. Coco Life. Coco Life. That's the way to live your life, Coco Life. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Now, right off the bat, it's milk chocolate. It almost looks like uh, Hershey chocolate, and I hope not because I don't like Hershey's chocolate. Card. I didn't read a card? Oh, my God, Janice. Thank you. Thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, also, keep in mind that it says chat disconnected right now, so uh, if you're typing something, I'm not going to see that until it comes back on, but you'll still be able to hear me and, uh, and see me. So I'm going to put this down. I didn't need it yet. We're still good. And let's go ahead and read a card. Oh, we're back on. Yeah, um, ATW, the thing is, it, it's not that the um, it's not that the stream gets disconnected. The chat gets disconnected. For some reason, the, the chat gets disconnected and nobody, if you're typing in there, I'm not seeing it. Um, if I'm, you know, so I, I'm not seeing what, what gets in there. And hopefully it catches up with itself. I don't know. But it, the stream, uh, the chat got disconnected, not the stream. So. I miss Mr. Doodle. Oh, no. Um, I'll bet he'd be back. So here's a question. This one's probably pretty easy, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Uh, I mean, the dame. It's good. Oh, the dame. Okay. I, I don't know. I've never had it before, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, what was cartoon character Wimpy's favorite food? Again, the question was, what is cartoon character Wimpy's favorite food? So uh, let's put that on the back burner. Extra points if you can tell me what show Wimpy was on and what his famous catchphrase was, this famous quote from Wimpy is. There we go. So now let's take a bite of Dame. Maybe it's like Dame Drops. Dame Drops chocolate. Ooh, it is crunchy. Almost like a toffee. Maybe not the best milk chocolate, but not horrible either. Not Hershey's bad, but it is really crunchy. It's like a, almost like a Heath, a Heath bar. You know how uh, Heath bar is crunchy on the inside? Like a Heath bar, that kind of crunchy. It's sticky though. It's like sticking in my teeth. I guess it's supposed to do that. Mine's like a Heath bar. What is it? It's in a Heath bar that isn't in a name. 
Or what is it that's a game that's not a heat bar? That really sticks to your teeth. It's stuck in there. It actually is pretty good. That's going to get a thumbs up. I was thinking that, you know, sometimes if the quality of the chocolate's not that good, it's not enjoyable. This one's pretty good. It's pretty decent. Now I have two for later. Man, that's crunchy. It is really crunchy. Can you hear that, Firefly? Can you hear it crunching in my mouth? But like I said, to me, very similar to a Heath bar. Does anybody, did anybody know the difference between a Dame and a Heath bar? Like what's in one that's not in the other? To me, the Heath bar is maybe a little bit drier so maybe not as much chocolate on a Heath bar. That could be my that could be my not remembering Heath bars very much because I haven't eaten one in years. Yeah, the only thing the only drawback is that that getting stuck in your teeth kind of thing. It's not bad though. I wanted to make sure I didn't grab the wrong glass. Never had a Heath bar. Has anybody had a Heath? Well, it looks like Fireflies had a Heath bar. Anybody else had a heat bar? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's review our question. Our question was, what was cartoon character Wimpy's favorite food? And uh, so Janice Yamanaka said hamburgers. Uh, Tom said hamburgers. Um, Janice Yamanaka said Wimpy was on Popeye, and he would say, I would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. John King said hamburgers. Uh, Firefly said that's really crunchy. I'm just kidding. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't about uh, Wimpy. I think those were the only answers, and they're all correct. Wimpy's favorite food was hamburgers, and his favorite—he uh, was uh, featured on Popeye. I think he was one of Popeye's best friends, and his catchphrase or the thing he would say on a regular basis was, "I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today," um, because of Wimpy's uh, love for hamburgers. There was actually a chain. I don't know if they're still around. They could be. There was actually a uh, uh, fast food burger chain called Wimpy's that served burgers. So uh, I think they might have gotten in trouble for doing that. But there was a fast food burger chain called Wimpy's that served hamburgers. So you're all correct. Because you're all correct, you only get five points. Because normally, you know, one person has to be correct and the other one has to be wrong. So only give yourself five points. And if you didn't answer at all, give yourself ten. So, uh, that goes in the back burner. Uh, what would you do for a Klondike bar, Val? Uh, I would go to the grocery store and buy one. That's what I would do. Uh, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Uh, it is a thing most Americans bite and chew candy. Sometimes when they try hard candy, I'm afraid for their teeth. Uh, is there a proper way to eat that then, uh, ATW? Is there a proper way to eat a game bar? Like, are you supposed to just like let it sit in your mouth and just kind of fall apart? Um, or, or is, is that chewing, the, are you supposed to bite and chew it? So is that like, am I eating it incorrectly? I don't know. Hey, Drew, who, Drew. I'm going to try that again, this time in English. Um, Drew Horst just snuck in the room uh always welcome here drew and it's good to see you again so welcome and uh, thank you janice for for bringing it to my attention just by mentioning it all right so uh we are down to oh we have another chocolate to go let's do our other chocolate so this is um the name is belonging i don't think it's belonging belonging Bel belonging belonging um uh, ATW, are they are they messing with me? Do, does that actually mean anything? Baloning, balon, baloning. Um, and this, the reason that I found this interesting is that it is milk chocolate with lingonberries. That's an unusual thing. Now you do see a lot of ling. I don't know if it's like the national fruit of Sweden, but you do see a lot of Swedish things with lingonberry in it. And especially if you go to IKEA, they 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 have the lingonberry. Um, they used to have the lingonberry juice boxes. They really don't have that anymore. They have lingonberry gel jelly that you can buy. Uh, they they do have the stuff to make the lingonberry uh, juice, but it's uh, it's a syrup, and you have to mix it with water. So lingonberry is a big thing. Maybe it's a big thing in Sweden. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, so we are going to try this uh, milk chocolate with lingonberries. They're calling it bal baloning, but again, 
Not sure that's a real thing. Oh, there he goes. It means reward in Sweden. Yeah. Again, just one of those random things. Uh, no, Dan, you can chew and eat directly, but you can savor it for a while. Oh, okay. Uh, good to know. So uh, yes, so we're gonna we're gonna put this uh, reward uh, off to the side while I read a card. And uh, the card is uh, I'm gonna pretend I'm reading it right now. Do I have that? I have it right side up. The question is, what dish was named after John Montagu? Again, the dish. What dish was named after John Montagu? Montagu or Montagu, maybe. Uh, but uh, but there was a dish named after him. What dish was named after John Montagu? So that goes over here. Back burner, you know the drill. Uh, bacon, grilled onions, onion strings. In regards to what? Oh, you're answering stoner. Favorite burgers? Oh, favorite burger toppings. Let me think about that one. Favorite burger toppings. Genesis sounds good. Favorite burger to toppings. I'm going to go ahead and say... Grilled mushrooms, grilled jalapenos, and grilled onions. Those are my those are my favorite uh, burger toppings. But honestly, to be honest with you, if, if it's a really good burger, I, I, I like to put as little on it as possible. So I don't put any condiments on it at all. Maybe lettuce and maybe tomato, and that's it. Nothing else. On a on a good burger, they'll stand up. So that's that's how you can tell a good burger. You want to you want to equalize the playing field, and to do so, like you're trying a burger for the first time, um, you know you want to test the quality of the meat and everything. Maybe tomato, maybe lettuce. That's it. Uh, Lewis's lunch in um, in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. They don't. They have no condiments. So the only the only thing you can get on it is a slice of onion, you know, raw onion, slice of raw tomato, uh, or a cheese spread. That's it. Nothing else. And a lot of people complain about that, but to be perfectly honest with you, it's gonna sh it's gonna show off your meat. You could take that the wrong way, but please don't. Um, um, it. It, um, it it shows whether or not you're, you're using a good quality meat. So there we go. No mustard. No, I, I like I like mustard on a, on a... I mean, the thing is, I think the question is, like, what is your preference? But, you know, I like a lot a, a wide variety of things on it. I like, uh, like Gouda cheese on it. I like... Um, I do like mustard on it every once in a while. So, you know, it varies. I like to change things up. I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a big fan of consistency. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not somebody who walks into a place and orders the same thing every time. Uh, any restaurant I go to, I, n I I try never to order the same thing twice in a row. If I've eaten there like you know 80 or 90 times, and I've gone through every single menu item, then I might I might pick like I've been here before. I like that. That was good. I'll order that. But. If if it's uh, if it's if there are other menu items I haven't tried yet, I'll order those, those other menu items first. So I like I like to change it up. I don't really like consistency, so it's not like I'll always have my burger with the same thing on it. I, I like to change it up. All right, let's let's try a piece of this. Ooh, this feels really soft. I thought it was gonna like break, you know, where you could break off a piece of it, but it just feels really soft. We're gonna have to tear off a piece of this. I used to love making a PB and J sandwich with leftover hamburger pat. Oh, oh, okay, that will work. And a slice of lunch meat. What kind of lunch meat, Drew? Um, people are people think that uh, peanut butter is kind of weird on a burger. It's not weird at all. If you think about peanut butter, right? It's it's like a peanut. It's almost like a peanut sauce, right? It's like a satay sauce. So for like uh, Thai Thai meats, all the time they put a satay sauce under the peanut sauce. So on a burger, really not that uh, not that big a departure. Uh, jelly is different and interesting, but again, jelly is no stranger to meat. Uh, you have like leg of lamb with mint jelly on it, so so jelly's not uh, n not a stranger either. So to put peanut butter and jelly on a burger is not that really crazy. As a matter of fact, uh, if you go back and you watch the episode that we did at Grill 'Em All in Alhambra, Alhambra, um, uh, we did uh, what was it? what did they call that? I can't remember what the it was it was named after somebody, but I can't remember what it was called. Oh, the D Snyder it was the D Snyder was the burger that we had, and it was a burger with I think it was bacon, peanut butter, and jelly on it, and it was outstanding. So, yeah, not a big deal, not crazy. Val versus menu, yep, one item at a time. Uh, for just regular backyard burger, it's grilled onions, bacon, tomato, li very light lettuce, mustard, and American cheese. That's a, that's a that's a good call. Uh, a lot of people a lot of people talk down about American cheese. 
and and I think like if you're gonna make a, a sandwich with cold cuts in it, I don't I don't prefer American cheese in it. But sometimes American cheese on a burger is really good because it just has that kind of like a almost almost like a sour bite to it. Um, that uh, it, it, really what American cheese is is a blend of cheeses. It's a blend of different cheeses. I think there's a brick, there's a brick cheese, Colby cheese, and there's one other kind of cheese, maybe cheddar. And it's a mixture of cheeses. Um, and then if you buy craft slices, that they sometimes add like vegetable oil and some other things to it as well. But for 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 the way it melts over a burger, really very other very few cheeses will actually you know match uh, uh, American cheese. So sometimes for a burger, American cheese is just like it's just what the doctor ordered. I think American cheese is a lot better than it used to be. Yeah, it probably is. I, and it depends on the brand too. Yeah, this is like really soft. I was gonna break pieces off, but it, you know, as you can see, it's really soft. But there we go. So I don't know if you can see that. There's tiny little red pieces in there. Can you guys see that? Yeah, tiny little red pieces in there. Here we go. Oh, weird texture. It's soft, but it doesn't melt. It doesn't melt easily. The lingonberries are kind of weird because it's almost like, um, you know, like the skin on a blueberry, on the outside of the blueberry, where sometimes, you know, it's like you could definitely, it just only has some texture to it. These are the same thing. It has the, the, the texture of the skin of the berry in it. And then only some flavor. So it's not equally mixed all the way through there where it has, a, it has a kind of berry taste going all the way through it. So I think there's lingonberries mixed in, but not, not consistently mixed in. And so you only get these pockets of lingonberry flavor. Usually like, so one of the things is, if you kind of let it melt in your mouth, once the chocolate has all melted away and you swallow that, then you're left with lingonberries and you get the taste, the flavor, the flavor from the lingonberries. But it's not, again, it doesn't seem like it's it's um, kind of, you know, merged together with the chocolate. Kind of, I mean, um, need a second piece because sometimes, sometimes, you know, you get more flavor. You can see, you can see like the little, little red spots on the bottom there. Looks like this candy has measles. Ever have cheese that tastes like butter? Mm -hmm. Not surprising. They're both made from the same, butter and cheese are made from the same thing. So not surprising whatsoever. Still, it's mostly chocolate. So, so this is one of those things where the immediate flavor is the chocolate You only get you only start getting the lingonberry when the chocolate starts to go away. Lingon and chocolate is not a thing in Sweden. Well, there you go. Well, apparently, lingon apparently lingonberries are a thing in a thing in Sweden, and so I guess maybe IKEA figures let's put it in as many things as we can. I don't know. I'm gonna kind of give that a thumbs in the middle again. All you get is the chocolate at, at first. You have to wait till the chocolate's all gone. Then you get the lingonberry. It would be nice if you could get a little bit of both at the same time. So that's my that's that's my thumbs my reasoning for thumbs in the middle. What is the worst pizza I ever had? Mm. That's a tough question. I would have to say. And you guys can watch this because it was a trippy food episode. Uh, Trader Joe's does a um, kale, kale and something else. I can't remember what it was. Kale and something else um, pizza. And um, and it looked it looks like somebody sprinkled lawn clippings on the pizza. So it's a frozen pizza. You can make it in the oven if you want to. Everything, but it's terrible. It's the worst pizza I ever had. Now naturally, I said that, and vegans got mad at me, and they go, "Well, you're not supposed to eat it like that." And then I pointed out to somebody, the front of the box shows 
it with just the kale on it, just green, a green pizza, and it says serving suggestion on there. So it's like, you're not supposed to eat it like that. Well, apparently the box tells you you are supposed to eat it like that. And so that's how I ate it. But it was terrible. I would never, ever eat that again. Never. So uh, if you guys uh, are at Trader Joe's and you would decide you want to, you want to shop around and try to find something interesting and you see that kale pizza, walk away from it. Walk away. Just turn turn around and walk away slowly. You don't want to walk away fast because you might scare it and it might jump in your cart. No, that's what I say. What is the beverage today? Well, we have two beverages. We have... Um, uh, our alcoholic beverage is the um, Recorder League Premium Swedish Hard Cider, uh, passion fruit flavor, artificial flavor, no, zero percent juice. Really wasn't great. And the other one is what do I do with the can? What do I do with that? Oh, here uh, is uh, Ecologisk. I think is, is how you pronounce that. Cider Paron, uh, Swedish pear cider beverage, organic. So it is an organic pear cider. From IKEA, IKEA brand. Um, ATW. Does, what does that mean? Anything? Ecologisk. You can see that there, at the top one. Ecologisk. Does that mean anything? Please tell me it's a Swedish word for cider or pear cider even. Ryan Jones. Where is Ryan Jones? Oh, hey, better like than ever. Hope all's well. Lurking and napping today. No worries, Ryan. We still have uh, we have about 15 minutes left, so you are good to go. Um, Blue Moon. Uh, was that an answer to something, John? Because I didn't see, I didn't remember asking the question that the, that Blue Moon would have been the answer to. I don't see anybody else, but it's okay. I just was wondering. Uh, also, it is mostly in jam, which stores easily and either goes with meat sauce or potatoes. Yeah, uh, you're talking about lingonberry, correct, ATW? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it was kale and cauliflower. I think you might be right, Janice. Uh, either way, it was bad. And I think I even tried to put, uh, I don't know if I put sauce on it. I might put sauce on it, I might put cheese on it to try to make it taste better. It didn't help. So it was bad. I, um, did I put pepperoni on it? I might have put pepperoni on it too. I can't remember what it was. Either way, I couldn't make it taste better. It was bad. I'll never eat it again. That's, uh, yeah, that was the worst pizza I ever had. I had Exile Brewery's Oktoberfest beer they just released. Is it any good, Drew? Ecological. That's what it means, ecological? Oh, okay. That's. I would have guessed that because it almost sounds exactly like that. But, um, Maybe that means like organic. Maybe that's what it is. It means it kind of means organic as well. ATW is that right? Uh, anyone like to add jam to sandwiches? I use jam on my turkey, bacon, egg breakfast sandwich with sourdough. Uh, okay, so that's what it is. It's uh, because it says it's an organic cider. That's probably what it. That just means organic. Um, but but you know we Americans we see that and we think it's like a brand name or something. Like that, right? You know or the or the. Um, the Swedish name for parasiter. That's how that's how we roll. Uh, jam and sandwich. It depends on the sandwich, I think. Uh, jam on turkey, sure. Like I would say uh, cranberry jam, you know, on turkey, absolutely. Um, oh, a oh, turkey bacon and egg sandwich with sourdough with jam. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would go with with cranberry though. What uh, um, uh, Colin? What do you what do you usually put? I mean, what kind of jam do you usually put on that? Uh, I like jam on turkey sandwiches, I like the Monte Cristo sandwiches with jam. Yeah, uh, that because it's a uh, uh, Monte Cristo is a fried sandwich, and um, um, I think jam would go well on a, on a Monte Cristo. I think you're right, Jim. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, we read a card, and we didn't get. Uh, I don't think we got answers on that. I don't think anyone answered that. The question was, what dish was named after John Montague or Montague? Depends. Let's see. Did we did we get answers on that? I don't think we did. Uh, I don't see any. If you guys answered that, let me know. Because I don't see... Oh, uh, hang on a second. I take that back. Janice Yamanaka said sandwich. Uh, was that anybody... Did anybody else answer that? Because we're talking about sandwiches. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see anybody answer. So, the question was, what is the dish named after John Montague? Uh, it looks like... Um, it looks like Janice was the only one answered, and she said sandwich. The correct answer, unfortunately, is sandwich. Uh, Montague, or Montague, Montague was the fourth Earl of Sandwich, and he preferred to eat meats between slices of bread so he wouldn't get his fingers dirty when he was playing cards. So it was a, it was a, a thing of, um, while he was playing cards, 
he he would he would take the meats and cheeses and stuff that you know that was there, and he didn't want to get his all that stuff on his finger while he was playing cards. So he did, basically shoved it between two slices of bread and ate it. And so the sandwich was named after um, John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. So uh, that goes back in the deck. I could have said what 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 uh, food item was named after the Earl of Sandwich, but that would have been uh, like disgustingly obvious. So we have two things left. Uh, they are both called the same thing. They are both called, let me pull this one up because I think it's easier to read. Um, it looks like Lord Lord Egg's Goddess. Lord Egg's Goddess? ATW, I need your help here. Lord Egg's Goddess. I'm guessing that means candy. And the reason I'm guessing that it means candy is because we have two things. We have this, which is salted licorice, and we have this, which is uh, um, sour jellies. And they can't both be the same thing. So I'm not sure what, I, I, so I'm guessing um, Lord Egg's goddess means candy. That's that's what I'm guessing. ATW, help me out here. Saturday candy. It means Saturday candy? That's weird. Because we're eating on a Sunday. Imagine if we had our live stream yesterday and we ate this yesterday and we were eating Saturday candy on a Saturday. That would have been awesome. So we have two left. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna hold this one off and maybe do this one last because it's salted licorice and it's going to be a lot stronger. This one I just found interesting because they're sour jellies. So, I, you know, they're sour jellies or sour jellies. But uh, but uh, the flavors were what intrigued me. They have lemon, lime, and rhubarb. I've never had rhubarb before. Uh, rhubarb can rhubarb flavored candy and all. That really um, fascinated me. So we're going to do the we're going to do this one first. Then we'll do the salted licorice. Fun fact: There was a town called Sandwich. I, I know of Sandwich, Massachusetts, which is on on, on the Cape. Um, you know, grew up in Massachusetts, so I'm familiar with Sandwich, Massachusetts. Is there another town called Sandwich somewhere else as well? I do know Sandwich, Massachusetts. Um, I'm about to be headed back to work. Have a good rest of your guys' weekends. You too, as well, Drew. We only had your short time, but uh, we always love having you. So thank you for stopping by, and be careful, and have a great weekend. The rest of your weekend. So, before we open that candy, let's uh, uh, read another card. And the question is, what is Carolina style as it pertains to hot dogs? So, in other words, what is a Carolina hot dog? What uh, what what does a what is on a Carolina hot dog? Besides a hot dog and a bun, uh, what is Carolina style as it pertains to hot dogs? Again, back burner, middle burner, front burner doesn't matter. It's all pretend anyways. And let's open up our Saturday candy, our Lourdes, Lord Eggs, Lord Eggs Goddess, Lord Eggs Goddess. I, I don't speak Swedish. I, I hope I'm not uh, destroying language, and I hope ATW can find it in their heart to forgive me someday. These are the sour jellies with rhubarb, lemon, or lime flavor. Now, I'm guessing it's the color. It's based on the color. I'm hoping that's the case because I want to do... The, uh, I'm going to do the rhubarb first so that, so I get the full flavor of the rhubarb. And then I'll try the other ones. Uh, your lives are entertaining. Oh, nice. Thou card. Did I not read a card, John? I just read a card, right? Are you are you messing with me? Are you gaslighting me? I think I read a card. I did read a card. The Carolina style hot dog, right? All right, so this one's pink. And I'm guessing this is rhubarb because there's some yellow, some clear ones and some green ones. Um, one of those is lemon and one of those is lime. Can't tell which, but I definitely am thinking this is rhubarb. I was expecting it to taste like a Sour Patch Kid candy. It is sour. A oh, Sonoran dog, that sounds good. Stoner, did you see the episode that we did uh, eating the Sonoran dog? It was at Sonoran Grill in um, somewhere in the, in the Inland Empire. I can't remember exactly where it was. We were out there at the same time. We, we had a nine-pound burrito that me and um, me and um, Nando and Matt Zion shared it. So we each ate three pounds of this six of this nine pound burrito, and uh, Raina ate one, and she still beat us. Hmm. Not really strong. Not really strong rhubarb taste. 
it's sweet and sour. Maybe I need that one. That taste is really subtle. I think mostly the sour. I mean, rhubarb is tart anyways. And then um, lemon and lime are sour. So I think that's what, you know, they, they, they try to pick three, three foods. I don't know if I'm overwhelmed by that, by that one. Let's try one of these. I think that's supposed to be a lemon or a lime. Here, hang on a second. So we got two, like one is green, this one, and this one is, is like almost white. Maybe the green one is the lime and the light colored one is lemon. Let's see. Slaw dogs from, wow, holy crap. That one's a lot more sour than the other one was. Saw dogs were mentioned in the song Dumas Walker by the Kentucky Headhunters. Oh. I don't think I know the song. <laughs> oh, John. Carolina style hot dog has sauerkraut and kumquats. I, uh, wow. I can't even imagine what it'd be like to eat a, a, um, a hot dog with sauerkraut and kumquats on it. It would be like so sour. These flavors, really sour. More sour than Sour Patch Kids. Well, different kind of sour. It's like a citric acid sour but not, um, not that almost, almost artificial chemical sour that we get from Sour Patch Kids. I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give this a thumbs down. It's not bad, they're not terrible. You do get the sweet, you do get the sour, but you don't get the flavor. It's like, like those last two, I can't tell, my mouth can't tell which is the lemon and which is the lime. And the rhubarb one was like, I, it did, to me, it didn't taste like rhubarb. So, so the sour is there, the sweet is there, but the flavor is missing completely. Um, I'm gonna have to get a thumbs, thumbs down. So let's go back and visit our card. And uh, yes, another Sunday stream, Rugged Child, you were absolutely correct. Um, what, what happened was um, we were filming at the Orange County Fair because I'm now working during the week. I couldn't get to the Orange County Fair during the week, so I had to do it on a Saturday. And because uh, uh, we filmed with uh, Matt Zion from Reckless Eating. And we just appeared. And um, so we had to push the, the stream to Sunday. Next week, it'll be back on Saturday. So if you're watching and if you're if you're putting it on your calendar, go ahead and put it back on for Saturday next week. So the question was, uh, what is Carolina's style as it pertains to hot dogs? Janice Yaman, uh, let's see. Uh, was there anything before that? Janice, Yaman, Janice Yamanaka said, Carolina's style is chili, coleslaw, and onions. Uh... And then she said uh, slog dogs were mentioned in the song. Uh, John King said Carolina style has sauerkraut and kumquats. Uh, I think that was it. I think those are the only answers. The correct answer is, as Janice Yamanaka said, it is chili, coleslaw, and onions. It is absolutely correct. I, I actually had a Carolina style hot dog in, uh, there's, a, there's a chain called Jack's Cosmic Dog. Um, and they're in a, in a couple of different places, but I ate it one in Charleston, South Carolina. Really good, really good. Um, John King, I can't even imagine like like you would even taste the hot dog if it was covered with sauerkraut kumquats. You would not even taste that hot dog. So uh, interesting though. I, I, but, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't um, I wouldn't discount that though. I I maybe if if it's more like a sausage as opposed to a hot dog, that sauerkraut and kumquats might actually be nice on that. Uh, but it have to be very a very strong, very meaty sausage, I think, um, to put sauerkraut kumquats in it, and that could work. It could absolutely work. Uh, did I miss? Let's see. Um, hard to beat a good Chicago dog. Absolutely. There's so many different types of... So there is a restaurant here in Los Angeles called... Well, it's actually it's in Reseda called Fab's Hot Dogs. And what Fab's Hot Dogs is does is they do their take of famous hot dogs from all over the place. And so um, in New Jersey, there's a place called Rutz Hut that's famous for inventing a, a hot dog called the Ripper. And basically what they do is they put it in the, in, in the fryer 
and they just leave it in there until the skin cracks open. So the inside is hot and pink, and the outside is like chewy, um, almost burnt. And um, so they have varying levels of that. Like they have something called a weller, which is like well done. Then they have something called the cremator, and they basically say they don't they don't make the cremator very often because it's it's almost inedible. It's like wood, like trying to eat wood. Uh, so, but Fabs does their take of uh, of a ripper, of a New Jersey ripper. They do uh, they do a slaw dog, they do a Chicago dog, they do a Sonoran dog, they do all, all kinds of you know different um, uh, different hot dogs, and the uh, the um, ubiquitous L.A. danger dog. Um, so. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty interesting. But it is uh, chili, coleslaw, and onions on a um, on a Carolina style hot dog. So we have one item left, and we have five minutes. So we're doing pretty good. We have good. We're good. We're good. Oh, you're good. All right. So the question is, I mean, I think you guys know what it is already, but we're going to come a second anyways. The question is, what does the name restaurants give to the Patagonian toothfish? So if you go in a restaurant, you're not going to see Patagonian toothfish on the menu, but you might see it listed as something else. So what does the name restaurants give to the Patagonian toothfish? So that goes on the, let's put that on the front burner so it's quick to get off that. And let's turn the heat off completely because that burner is already hot. And let's go to our last item, which is our Saturday candy, uh, salted licorice. They're saying salty licorice. Now, I will tell you that just looking through this bag, um, uh, typically, when you're eating a salted licorice, you can actually see that salt on the outside. Now, that salt is not sodium chloride, sodium chloride being table salt. Salt. It is ammonium chloride. It's different. Um, and uh, by law, I think maybe, I'm trying to remember if, it, if it's Danish. Um, one of the Scandinavian countries, by law, they can only put up to 7% of that salt on it. You can't have more than 7% by law. I don't know if it's dangerous. I don't know what the deal is. But by law, you can't have more than 7% on it. So um, salted licorice, if you've never had it, um, it so, uh, a lot of people don't like licorice, black licorice. There's no such thing as red licorice, but, uh, but I'm saying black licorice so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of people don't like black licorice. They don't like the taste of it. If you don't like black licorice, you will hate salted licorice. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, salted licorice, um, it takes some getting used to. So the first time, I think the first time I tried it, I didn't like it that much and I had to eat it a few other times before I get used to it. And then it's kind of unique. So typically what happens is that, uh, that, that the ammonium chloride counteracts with the sugar, the sweetness of it. And it actually comes up with this kind of sour taste to it. So, uh, again, these look very, very different. Uh, let's see, this is a product of Finland, not Sweden. Finland, produced for IKEA of Sweden though, but it's a product of Finland. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and try these. Uh, I did I did read a card. What's an LA dog? Uh, so Stoner, an LA dog is what they call a danger dog, a street dog. So it's basically, um, if you ever go into like a sporting event or something outside on the street, you have that guy with like a shopping cart with a sterno thing inside it and a metal tray on top of it. And he's cooking the bacon wrapped hot dogs with peppers and onions and stuff. That's that's an LA dog. <laughs> Tube of kale. That's funny. I just killed a mosquito. He had it coming. Yeah. Do not. Hey, deficit 1080p. Uh, I uh, I don't recognize your name. So you're new here. We've not seen you in the chat before. I don't know if you've checked out one of our live streams before or have checked out our videos before. But welcome. Um, where are you from, deficit uh, 1080p? Uh, where uh, you know. Closest metropolitan area is fine. And uh, what brings you to our channel? How did you do it? Most of it is just that, I don't know. Is, is, is there a clever way of killing mosquito? I like those, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen those. They look like tennis rackets and, they're, they, they, and they have battery in it, but they zap the bugs. That's fun, because it makes this nice, you know, zapping sound when you do it. It's like, it's like flying into a, bu a bug zapper. 259, man. We're I'm going to go a little bit over. See, these are really smooth on the outside. You typically, the salted licorice, you can actually see that salt on the outside. Love your channel. Saw you on Reckless Good. Oh, well, welcome, Deficit. Good to have you here. Uh, where do you call home, Deficit? Not, I don't need a street address. Closest metropolitan area is fine. Yeah, I mean, it's so satisfying because, like, you're sitting there on the porch. You have the bug zapper behind you. Then you hear that zap, and you go, like, got one. And you hope it wasn't, like, a praying mantis or something. I use the bug assault. 
bug assault, as, like assault, assault. These are weird. Thought about reckless eating through trippy food. That's interesting. Oh, forest lust. See, I didn't even I didn't even recognize that you came in the room. Stay trippy for life, Val. I will, Forrest. I found about reckless eating through trippy food. That's funny. Most people sail away around. They find about for me from reckless eating, but either way, our channels are 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 different enough for it to be entertaining when we're both on each other's channels. I think that's just me. Those guns are really cool. Bug assault. Oh, that's a it's a it's a gun. It's like a it's like it shoots something at the bug. I'm going to say that these are not as strong as typical salted licorice. They do have, I mean, they do have that that little kind of sour taste from the um, ammonium chloride, but they're not as over the top as some salted licorice. So this would, this in my opinion, would be a good entry level point for someone who wanted to try salted licorice for the first, first time. If you're going to do, if you want to do that, you want to see what salted licorice is like, try this one first. And then start to go for the more hardcore ones. I would recommend that. So I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Like I said, because it's it's kind of easy going from a salted liquor standpoint. Um, and, and it seems like it's more blended in there, and you don't you don't get that the crystals of salt on the outside of it. I mean, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up for those. So it shoots salt. Wow. I, I, I would think that that wouldn't be very accurate. That would be that would be interesting. Spray can with a lighter, best choice. Yes, Jesse, until you burn your house down. Uh, all right. Our question was, what is the name restaurants give to the Patagonian toothfish? Did anybody answer that? I didn't see any answers whatsoever. We started talking about mosquitoes. We were talking about hot dogs. I don't see and did anybody answer the question. And how is it Janice? Janice didn't answer the question. Janice, how how did you not answer that question? What is the name restaurants give to Patagonian toothfish? So here's what I'm going to do. I will answer the question. The answer is the name that restaurants give to the Patagonian toothfish is Chilean sea bass. So when you buy a Chilean sea bass, it is not a, ah, there it is. Why didn't I not see that? Oh, there it is. They call it Chilean sea bass. The ammonium chloride level is set for safety. Oh, those are two, those are two separate statements. One is for the, the question and the other one is for the salted licorice. I see that. So uh, yes, you are absolutely correct, Janice. It is Chilean sea bass. Um, no one's going to go into a restaurant and order Patagonian toothfish. But they might add, uh, they might order Chilean sea. It is not a bass. It is not a sea bass. It is a Patagonian toothfish. And so little known, even less cared about fact, uh, because Janice was the only one opening, uh, answering that question. Everybody gets 100 points. Please add that to your current points. And then um, make sure you have that on a piece of paper, which I then want you to um, fold up in four sections and then put in the trash. So uh, that's our game. Uh, thank you for playing. We're at 3.02 already. We managed to finish all our snacks in time. I was afraid we might run a little bit over. We just ran a slight, slight amount over. I do apologize for anybody who might have missed the stream because we did it on Sunday instead of Saturday. I thought I gave enough notice, but, you know, who know, who really knows? Again, it was a scheduling issue because uh, with my day job, um, sometimes I've got to do um, uh, filming and stuff on the weekends. So that's kind of, that's kind of where we are. Uh, I will ask you once again to uh, kind of go through our list. If you go to our YouTube channel uh, and you go to the bottom of the, uh, of the YouTube channel, there's a, a thing called featured, is it featured pages or featured featured channels, featured channels. Take a look through that. Those are people who, you know, you, you probably recognize some of them as as uh, having done, um, having done collaborations with us and everything, but they're all great channels. I would not uh, recommend any channels that I honestly didn't think were entertaining. Um, uh, so we have, like Janice has her own channel, uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado has his own channel. Um, there are a lot of people. Oh, also I want to, th uh, send, send out a, um, uh, apology to, uh, Snackhead Cowboy, also another channel, uh, because last, I think last was last week, at the very, very last, like I already pressed the end, end stream and he came in and he said, hello. So I, I missed you and I'm sorry about that, uh, Jack, but, um, you know, I hope to see you again soon. So um, it is a Sunday afternoon. It is warm. It is sunny. Uh, try to enjoy the rest of your weekend and prep yourself for the week coming up. But as always, please, please take care of yourselves. Please take care of other people. Please be careful out there. And we will see you soon. Thanks for joining us today. Bye, everybody.